So back in 2019, Atlassian rolled out some challenge and as soon as they rolled out, after some time, they saw an outage. Right. So in this video, we'll dissect this outage to understand what exactly happened. There are a bunch of interesting nuances to cover and more importantly, a lots of learning to take. So when things went down, in five minutes, it recovered. Right. They made no changes, but it recovered. The core essence of this outage happened because of load balancers. And this tells us one thing about it, that load balancers are not magic. Right? And this is the exact title of their blog post as well, which I'll link in the i tag. You can find it below the descriptions. Now let's start digging deeper into understanding what exactly happened over here. So first thing first, architecture is really simple, a standard three tier architecture, bunch of plants connecting to a load balancer, load balancer, balancing the load across API servers. And there is a database, pretty simple, straightforward, nothing fancy. Now, what exactly happened? So when things went wrong, what they observed? They observed that their service metrics were wrong. What are service metrics? The metrics on the API servers, which means API servers were healthy. The memory utilization was not high. The CPU utilization was not high. Those things are very good. Uh, there were no logs in, sorry, basically there were no error logs as well. So no exceptions logged in their S SDRR logs or sys logs or whatever. So those things are working fine. But the request on their load balancer was zero. So they could see a visible dip, literally taking it to zero during this outage duration. So what happened? When they looked at it, now here, just to bring everybody to the same page, when we use ELB, it's typically AWS managed. The infrastructure of Atlassian is on AWS and they are using AWS managed load balancer called as elastic load balancer, which is I'm using the term ELB over here. Okay. Now, as soon as things went wrong, they saw application metrics were fine, but the load balancer was not. So naturally they made a call to AWS to get a deeper insight to understand what exactly happened. Remember the system auto recovered after five minutes. Right? Okay. So whatever we're discussing is kind of a post-mortem at this moment. Now, what did AWS people tell them? AWS people from their internal dashboard, they got this insight that all the newly created ELBs, the server within the load balancer, because load balancer is an abstract entity beneath the lines, there would be multiple load balancer servers. So the new load balancer servers that were created, they died because of OOM errors. OOM is out of memory errors. Now, remember this load balancer is not a single machine. There are a bunch of load balancer servers within that abstracted behind a single domain name or a single IP address, which we typically create as a load balancer. Okay. <clears throat> now the job of the load balancer is to horizontally scale the servers that are powering it. So when the load increases, the LV server also increases for it to handle the incoming request. Apart from your regular API servers, apart from your, apart from your API, uh, regular API servers, which are uh, scaling out or horizontally scaling, the servers inside your load balancer itself also scales to handle the large number of requests that are coming. So what exactly happened? If load balancer is scalable, why was it not able to handle the load and the request dip to zero? That is a core question that needs to be asked. So first thing, load balancers are scalable with respect to number of requests and uh, new nodes did get added when the number of requests increased because the newly added servers resulted in OOM errors. So the load balancer did scale, but new nodes did get added. But remember this, the time to take, so when a load balancer scales, which means a load balancer internally adds one server, the time it takes for that server to start or to start serving the request is typically one minute to seven minutes. After that, it is ready to serve. So right from the time to spin up a new load balancer server to the time it is ready to accept the request, it takes roughly one minute to seven minutes to do that which is where your load balancers, remember this, load balancers are not magic. So this is where your load balancers are okay 
when there are surges in the request but they are not so good when there are sudden spikes these are the spikes that we typically see during hot stars or geo cinemas of the world when a marketing event happens or something interesting is happening in the cricket match and a lot of users come in at a very short time imagine flash sale imagine a marketing push imagine cricket match getting interesting right so that is an extreme spike of requests that they get so load balancers can handle surges but they cannot handle spikes remember this load balances are not magic they are not like infinitely scalable and for all cases it would work fine be mindful of that okay so did Atl did atlassian observe any spike the answer is no all they gave you that all that painted a picture where because load balancer cannot handle spike but did atlassian observe any spike no so what happened if there was no spike no application errors nothing then what exactly happened remember what we started with we started with atlassian rolled out some challenge so let's dig deeper into how atlassian rolls things out so when they deploy a new change this is what their architecture was supposed to be so they have a kind of a blue green they had a kind of a blue green deployment where what they did is when a service is deployed they replace the api servers which means they create a new api servers with a new version of the code and deprecates the old api servers so they replace the api servers interestingly they replace the old elb with a new elb i don't know why they do it i don't know why they did do it but they also replace the old elb with a new elb and then they flip the dns entry so dns is imagine the service is svc1 so let's say svc svc onecom is the dns entry which points to load balancer whose ip address is 10.0.0.1 now these are old servers then there are new servers that are spin up a new load, load balancer spin up and the dns entry flips from load balancer 1 to load balancer 2 this way the request would start coming to the newer infrastructure that's the whole idea so when they flipped the dns entry the request started coming to the new load balancer supposedly the request should be redirected to the api servers all good but what exactly happened is when they flipped the DNS from old infra to new infra after this change, the ELB was not ready. Was not ready with respect to it was functioning. It was it could serve small number of requests, but it wasn't as scaled as it is supposed to be. So, for example, if at that moment when the flip happened, let's say the old ELB, I'm using a random number over here. Imagine if an old ELB is, let's say, handling 100,000 requests per second, right? Now, for that 100,000 requests per second, it needs 10 LB servers internally to do it, right? So, each server is handling 10,000 requests per second. Let's say that is a limit. Now, when a new load balancer is spin up, obviously, it would, AWS would not start with 10 LB servers inside that. It might start with one or two. So, what happened is, when a new ELB was created, it was... It had two LB servers inside it, which means it can handle, let's say, 20,000 requests per second. But what happened is, as the DNS flipped from this to this, whatever your incoming request was, that same request suddenly started going to load balancer too. Now, imagine if the current load is 100,000 requests per second, there are two LB servers within that, each one capable of handling 10,000 requests per second. So, in totality, they can handle 20,000 requests per second. And the num the current load that moved from LB1 to LB2 is 100,000. What about the remaining 80,000? Right? So, because of that, what happened is, they saw a dip in the number of requests your load balancer can handle because it was not warm enough. That's how people call it it was it's ready it can serve some request but it wasn't warm enough so they needed large number of lb servers which they did not have and it took five minutes for the elb to react when it saw a large number of requests hitting it because elb takes it time to add a new lb server and to get it up and running so this is where the time for the time the elb took to react when it saw the number of requests and it added more LB servers until the time the LB server got ready, that is the time where Atlassian observed a downtime. The slump that we were discussing at the beginning of it, this is what they saw at that time 
because your ELB took to react when this thing happened. Right? And once it had enough servers, it was able to handle the request. So which is why the system automatically recovered after five minutes. They had to do nothing, no code changes, nothing, no rollback, everything was good. It, it is a time that was taken by the load balancer in order to add more LB servers because the influx of request was high. That's the whole idea. Then what's the fix? It's simple. They started reusing the same load balancer and they simply replaced the server because why change the load balancer? So they kind of, again, I don't know their architecture, I don't know their strategy, but they kind of moved from a blue-green deployment of completely replicating their infrastructure to a rolling deployment where they simply roll out the odd server and they replace it with uh, odd old server and they replace it with the newer one. Right? That's what they did. Pretty simple fix, no complication, and then they never saw error again and they lived happily ever after. Right? Pretty good story. Now, few things, few key takeaways for you from this thing. First, LB takes time to scale. So don't consider load balancer as a magical thing or something that is infinitely scalable. Right? So if you are getting, if you are expecting spikes, make sure that your load balancers are quote unquote warm. In order for you to do that, reach out to AWS or whoever your cloud provider is and ask them to pre-warm your load balancer. That's what you should do. Right? And uh, second thing is load balancers are not magic. They are not black box. So try to know how they work, like the time it takes for it to warm up and add more servers and whatnot. It just helps you make better design decisions, especially while operating at scale so that you don't do, do you don't make such blunders as it happens. It's perfectly fine. Things go wrong. You learn from it and then you make sure that it never happens ever again. Right? And yeah, this is interesting. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. And this is what I, what I wanted to cover today. All the important links, the blog that I referred and whatnot, you can find it in the iCard or below the description beneath the video. Or you are just a Google search away and like just search for this title, you'll find it. Right? And yeah, uh, I do take a lot of courses on system design, which are highly practical and completely no fluff. If you like how I teach or what I cover, do check out the courses. It's pretty interesting. I've been doing it for four years now. And I try to spark curiosity rather than going into drawing boxes. We go into implementation detail and have a lot of fun. Like always, do like, share and subscribe and spread the word on socials and be curious. The world of engineering is beautiful. Dig a level deeper. More importantly, have fun.